On March 20th, Nintendo released a game that many of us had been anxiously awaiting since its announcement. Finally, after almost an entire decade, we'd be getting our hands on a true Animal Crossing game. Not some Mario Party Animal Crossing hybrid, not some half-thought cash grab mobile game, a real flagship, full-fledged Animal Crossing game on a current gen Nintendo system. At long last, a fun polished game in a pretty serious Nintendo drought. Or so we thought. There are many things that Animal Crossing New Horizons does right, and so many things that Animal Crossing New Horizons does wrong. In this review, I will go over what I find most enjoyable about the game and some badly needed quality of life improvements. If you are new to the Animal Crossing franchise, let me quickly explain to you that these are not games intended to be binged for several hours a day. These games use a real-time mechanic where the in-game time matches your real-world time. So when something in the game takes, say, three days to complete, you'll have to wait three actual real-life days to reap that reward. Some people get around this by exploiting a time travel concept by changing the internal dates of their Nintendo Switch, but they're the same kind of people that thinks Back to the Future is the greatest trilogy of all time, and we don't acknowledge them. Right. Now, to most, this concept of time will probably sound like a terrible idea, but at heart, Animal Crossing games are meant to be slow-paced and played for the long haul. Months, if not years. So, with that explained, let's get to my first point of what Animal Crossing New Horizons does so well. Bringing you back every day. At the start of every new day, which in New Horizons is 5am, you are tasked with things to do. This can range from mundane chores like pulling weeds, planting flowers, to larger infrastructure feats like building museums and designing the layout of your island. Even when I think I have nothing to do for the day, for instance, at the time of writing this, my general store, Nook's Cranny, will be closed until tomorrow, I find myself hopping on and watering flowers, fishing, fossil hunting, and the list goes on and on. You are rewarded for doing these things with two types of in-game currencies known as Bells and Nook Miles, both of which can be used to buy and do things around your island or visiting mystery islands. I find myself playing this game roughly 30 minutes a day, but will be playing it for many months to come. Another thing that New Horizons does well to keep their players engaged are their themed events. Every couple of weeks there is a new event to draw you back in. New furniture items, new bugs or fish, new things to donate to your ever-growing museum collection. Something new for you to explore while you hop on and complete your daily tasks we just talked about. So far, none of them have been completely game-changing, but all of them are cute and worth a look. On top of the special events, there are special guests that come to visit your island. A goth-looking chameleon that is obsessed with bugs and will buy them for one and a half times the market value, or a sloth partner that does the same thing, but with fish. Special clothing vendors make random appearances, as well as mystery flooring and wallpaper dealers, black market art traders, and the list goes on and on. Sometimes there's even a ghost that can be found wandering your island at night. Interacting with these villagers and completing their quests can reap special rewards for you to show off to your villagers and friends. These themed events are all free and are a great way to get players to enjoy the game over long periods of time. If you've ever followed the storyline of a character in a TV show, video game, or movie only to have them die and you find yourself an emotional disaster, if you answered yes, New Horizons might not be the game for you. Your villagers won't be dying off anytime soon, but one thing that this game does really well is make you care about the villagers you have on your island. Or, adversely, you may hate certain villagers and want nothing more for them to leave. There are a staggering 402 villager characters in New Horizons, and your island can only hold 10 of them at any time. Each villager has their own style, attitude, slang, and overall unique characteristics. A lot of these characters have been a part of the franchise since the first flagship game, and many players find themselves hunting to recruit their favorites from past games to live on their island in this game. The last Animal Crossing game I had played before New Horizons was the first Animal Crossing for the Nintendo GameCube about half of my life ago. I don't really remember any of the villagers from that game, but that did not stop me from quickly falling in love with a few of them, none more than my little derpy duck friend Derwin. This is where the heartbreak comes in. 
You and your villagers build friendship levels in this game by talking with each other and exchanging gifts. Gifts the villagers like will yield more friendship points and eventually they will become good friends. Derwin was not only my good friend, but he was my favorite villager on my island. I even told my wife, who plays the game with me, I don't care who comes or goes on our island as long as Derwin is here. I thought everything was fine between Derwin and I until one day I saw that he was saddened by something. So naturally I went to talk to my friend and cheer him up. Well, he told me that although he loves living on Gullah Gullah Island, which is the name of my island, shout out to 90s kids. He wanted to travel the world to further his education. I had the option to tell him no, please stay, and believe me, I really wanted to. But I felt so guilty. How could I force Derwin to stay? After telling him that I think he should pursue his dreams, he told me how great of a friend I was, and he nicknamed me Cookie. He left a few days after having a goodbye party, and I haven't seen him since. It was a sad day on Gullah Gullah Island. So whether it's good or for bad, one thing Animal Crossing does well is make you really feel like you have meaningful relationships with the villagers on your island. Also, if any of you come across Derwin from Gullah Gullah Island, please tell him Cookie says hello and that I miss him. Moving on to what is easily my favorite part of the game is your island's museum where a quirky isle named Blathers takes donations and displays them beautifully for you and your friends to see. Though you are never forced to make the donations to the museum, you can donate any fish, fossils, bugs, or pieces of art that the museum does not yet have. If the museum already has those items, Blathers will tell you that they do not need the donation and you are free to display it elsewhere on your island, in your home, or sell them for some extra bells. As someone who loves marine life and fish and going to aquariums in real life, the layout of the aquarium in the museum is absolutely mind-blowing, as you can see on the screen now. The items you donate to the museum really come to life in their respective environments. The fish's sections seem to be broken down into river and pond, ocean life, and deep sea ocean life. The insect wing of the museum is broken into what type of plant the bugs live on naturally, for example, trees or tree stumps, flowers, different colored flowers, or maybe even on water. The fossil wing of the museum takes you through a line of evolution and a history of the fossil record, and the art gallery seems to be split between art pieces and artwork and paintings and statues and sculptures, though this section is only a couple days old, so not much yet is known about this section of the museum. I think the best way to describe the museum and how beautiful it is, is actually to say nothing at all and let you just watch my character running through the ocean life or the fish life section of the museum. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. With all the things that I have talked about that Nintendo absolutely nailed on the head, and many many smaller things that I did not even really mention, it would be hard to believe that there would be many things disappointing about this game. Sadly, you would be mistaken. This game is in desperate need of some quality of life updates, and the community has been begging for them. Will Nintendo respond and deliver? Only time will tell. Until that day comes, let's talk about the things that Nintendo has failed to deliver on. Let me start off by saying that I love survival crafting games. Games like Terraria and Minecraft are some of my favorite games of all time, and I continue to come back to them year after year after year. In the survival crafting genre of video games, your tools and armor tend to break, which can be negated by upgrading your items and skills to the point of having items that are either literally unbreakable, or you'll end up dying in lava and losing it before it can break anyways. 
For those games, it's part of the gameplay loop, and it never feels like more than just a slight annoyance at most. In New Horizons, the fact that your tools break can bring a project you were working on to a screeching halt, and really pull you out of your creative immersion. When Nintendo said New Horizons will be the Breath of the Wild of Animal Crossing games, I wasn't anticipating that this is what they meant. Broken weapons in Breath of the Wild was a dumb move, and broken tools in New Horizons is also a dumb move. Having to run back to your house, grab supplies, craft a new tool, and then run back and continue to what you were doing is just not what the Animal Crossing franchise is all about. Yes, I know, I sound very petty, because really, with upgraded tools, your tools don't break all that often, maybe just once or twice a day, but why do they have to break at all? None of the other flagship Animal Crossing games had item durability, so why start now? In my opinion, this was something that did not need fixing. To top it off, there is no durability meter on your items. That is something that a game like Minecraft adds to alleviate the annoyance of a tool breaking. If you were about to go on an epic mining session looking for those sweet, sweet diamonds, and your pickaxe is in the red, you know to bring a backup, or two, or five. New Horizons gives you zero warning when your item is going to break. No visual degradation, nothing. You are just blindsided with your item poofing out of existence, left standing empty-handed with a dumbfounded look on your stupid face. Silly move, Nintendo. Luckily, a durability bar under the item like shown on the screen right now seems like it would be a pretty simple hotfix that would make a lot of us islanders pretty dang happy. Being what most of my students would consider a boomer, at the decrepit age of 34, I remember what it was like to have to dial up onto the internet. The golden days of your computer screeching at you as you saw the little AOL man running across the monitor, rewarded with an invigorating, you've got mail, as you finally logged in. All of this anticipation, only to be booted off when your mom picks up the phone to order food or call a friend, because back then, people actually called each other. Cell phones were very rare in the 90s, and text messaging certainly did not exist. Luckily, in the year 2020 with modern internet technology, we don't have these issues anymore. So why must Nintendo make us relive the ancient days of technology? Whenever I want to visit a friend's island or they want to come visit mine, I have to go to the airport to connect to the old internet. What? My switch is already connected to the Wi-Fi. Why am I not already just connected? You already lack a party chat feature. You already make having friends on the Switch dang near impossible with the 78 digit friend codes we have to type in, instead of using what Xbox and PS4 and PC all use, a search feature. Why must I go through the horrendous dialogue screen every single time I want to visit someone's island? I am all for the nostalgia of the 90s, when I wake up in the but this ain't it Nintendo. For a company that makes a ton of party games, you really make it difficult for people to play together. Unfortunately, New Horizons suffers from the same plague. There are two major flaws with the crafting system in New Horizons. Your crafting bench doesn't pull from your house inventory, and you can't craft multiple items. At first, neither of these may sound like viable complaints, but hear me out. Any New Horizons player knows that catching a fish is a great way to make money. But also, if you want to fill that glorious museum with all of the rare fish in the sea, you'll need to do a lot of it. One thing that makes this task easier is by using fishing bait. Fishing bait will force spawn a fish in the location that you throw the bait. For example, if you are looking for a specific fish that only spawns off the edge of your dock, then go to the edge of your dock and throw down some fish bait. Boom! You have a fish. Is it your prized rare fish that you've been searching for? Probably not. It is a rare fish after all. But hey, at least there's a chance. Sounds good, right? Wrong. The way that you get that fish bait is by digging up manila clams from the sand. You find these by running around the beach looking for little spurts of water coming from the ground. If you dig in that location, you will find a clam. Still, totally acceptable. Although I'm not sure why there's not an option to just buy fish bait at your island's local store. After all, you can buy everything else there, including craftable items like tools and medicine. Anyways, you dig up clams for as long as you'd like, which, by the way, they don't stack in your inventory, so your inventory will fill up pretty quickly, until finally you feel like you have enough clams to make enough bait. Then, you take those clams to your crafting bench to make some fish bait. Great, time to get hunting for that giant tuna you've been searching for. Well, 
Not quite yet. You have to craft each bait individually. Not only that, you have to go through a stupid little animation and dialogue screen each time as well. Why? This seems so needlessly redundant. I don't even care if the actual crafting animation took five times longer, if I could craft five of them at once. That's fine, but having to repeat the entire process for each individual item is absurd. Again, this seems like it would be an easy fix, and again, someone has already created ideas for Nintendo to implement this concept. We can only hope that Nintendo is listening, though, as time goes on, my hope seems to fade into disdain. The other complaint I have about crafting is that if you are trying to make an item and you don't have the materials needed to craft said item, the game doesn't pull those materials from your house inventory. So you have to exit the crafting bench, open up your house inventory, pull out some of the materials, forget what else you need, go back into the crafting bench, look up the crafting recipe again, exit the crafting bench, go back into the house inventory, and get the rest of your supplies. Now, you can craft your tool that you didn't know was going to break in the first place because it doesn't have a durability meter. With your raw thumbs because you spent 45 minutes last night making fish bait for the fish that you didn't catch. This may seem like a tall order to ask, but it isn't. They already do it with a different mechanic in the game. If you access your dresser to change your clothes, you can change into outfits that, you guessed it, are stored in your house inventory. So if your dresser has access to your house inventory, how come your crafting bench doesn't? It's backwards. People are using crafting materials far more frequently than they're changing their clothes, especially with the use of wands, which we don't want to get into for this video. So it would seem the more convenient option, if we had to choose only one, would be to allow the storage access to the crafting bench, not the dresser. Again, dumb move, Nintendo. My final rating for this game, even after my ranting, is a 7.5 out of 10. For me, that's a pretty good score. There are still so many things that are really great about this game, and I know, even with all of its flaws, I will continue to play this game for quite some time to come. If Nintendo fixes the quality of life issues that we are suffering from, I would gladly have given this game a 9 or even a 9.5. Thank you for listening to my review. This is very different from my normal type of video. If this is something you enjoyed, please make sure you hit the like button and subscribe for more content. Let me know in the comments section if you'd like to see more reviews and what games you want me to review. Have a great day and stay safe.